Hello everyone and welcome back to the ETL series. In the last lecture we have seen how we can create Azure Databricks as a service as well as we have also seen how to create a cluster inside that and how to create a notebooks and how to use it and how to do the peering option. A part of that we have also seen few interview questions you might face in your future when you go for database kind of interview. And today's lecture is all about as a data engineer you must be knowing about SQL databases. So SQL databases into Azure is day by day improving and there is one more ad hoc option which is nowadays booming a lot which is Synapse Analytics that we are going to see in the next lecture. But in today's lecture, we are mainly focusing on the databases that is SQL databases. So SQL databases basically is a relational databases as a service. So which is again a pass environment and it provides a lot of features inbuilt inside it where you don't even have to maintain them at all. When we talk about the relational databases, the one thing that comes into your mind is the structured data, right? The structured data that includes the schema, the constraints, relationships between two or more tables. And that includes the reach queries that you use to query your tables or data. When we talk about the deployment models that are available into Azure, there are three types basically. One is that you can use a single databases which is fully managed and isolated data. Second is the elastic pool which is combination of multiple single databases that you are using which will share the resources at the backend. The third thing is the managed instances. Managed instances mostly you might not be using but it is very helpful when you are doing the lift and shift from your on premise or any other environment to the cloud and it is really helpful but the cost that you give for the managed instances are very high as well as you again get some functionalities to manage your databases and do in the maintenance activity would be the add-on thing that you need to do but apart of all of this we also have one more feature that you can even launch SQL virtual machines Okay, when we talk about the purchasing model, there comes one single thing, which is a DTU, that is Data Transaction Unit. So, Data Transaction Unit is uh, being used for the purchasing model. What amount of DTU you want to use? It gives you the option like 10 DTU, 20 DTU, 30 DTU. You can upgrade as per your need. And there is another option as well that is V core. Now basically when you talk about the elastic pools, the elastic pools works in such a way that let's say you have one database that you have and you have selected 10 DTU you need to scatter your data services and the data driven activities that you do. But in case your activities are exceeding the threshold value of 10 DTUs, so elastic pool comes into picture. In practical, we will see how actually it is used. But if you need that, please let me know in the comment box and I'll give you the another lecture specifically for the services that you need. A part of all of this, like there are one more add-on features that is provided by Azure to provide you the best availability services for your database which will provide you 99.995% of availability when you use those services. So one of it is automatic backups, second is point in time restores, third is active geo replication, then fourth is auto failover groups and the fifth is zone of internet capability. Now, without wasting further time, let's move to the practical and see how we can create a database and how we use all the inbuilt services in the databases. Apart of that, we are also going to see one important service or you can say a software that is provided by Microsoft Azure to manage all your databases which is called as Azure Data Studio. <laughs> So let's begin with the practical. Now let's click on the all service first and let's find out the SQL database which is a pass environment. Yeah, so here it is. So let's click on it. Now 
as you see there is no database yet created so let me first click on the new button or you can even click here to create the new data sql database you will get this page where you need to fill the basic information that is first is the resource group name so i already have created one resource group in my last practical let me create the new resource group for now let me name it as my rg dash etl let's hit ok now there is a place where you have to fill in the database name now when i'm typing my database name as my sql db uh, it's a it accepts that so yeah that's good so it's a database name not the server name but now there comes an another field where you have to input your server name if you are already have a server created for your databases then you can even select it from the drop down if you don't have that you don't need to worry you you get an uh, inbuilt option there to create new server now here you have to input the server name isql server db db server 01 so yeah it's taken now i can use this name uh, going forward and let me give the server admin login so this would be your sql credentials that you would be using to access your database or maybe server so i'm giving it as sql admin and then the password you have to give let me confirm the password once again and once you do that you have to select the location so location you can select it anywhere but as i select it by default it's east us uh, region going forward there is an option called as elastic pool so uh, you, you, if you hope you remember we have discussed about sql elastic pool there here is the option you can select it yes or no if you want the elastic pool or is, if you already have the elastic pool you can select it from the drop down if you don't have it you can create it from this page as well so let's keep it as no for now because i don't want to create an elastic pool but rather than i will create a single database there is another option that i have to select the size and the compute power there are three options uh, one is the basic second is the standard and the premium in the basic we can we get the maximum is of 2 gb of storage and it will cost us about 359 uh, INR and if you go for a standard you can opt for 10 DTU as a minimum and if you want to understand more about the DTU and the service tiers and the pricing model you can click on this link smallest you can keep it as 10 DTU and you can uh, increase it up to 3000 DTU unit so maximum data size that I can have is 250 GBs and the minimum size that I can have is 100 MBs and when you change this DTU you will see the price estimation here is also getting increased so here is the V core option you can even opt for the another kind of a storage or a compute power that is a V core as a as per the basis of V core you can select your performance currently I am selecting only basic for now for the demo then we come to the networking section in the networking section we get uh, connectivity methods how we want to connect to the database first option by default is a no access it won't provide you any kind of access second option is the public endpoint connection that you can provide and third is the private endpoint connection that you can create okay so when you are selecting the public endpoint it will go through the public network and uh, when you opt for the private endpoint it will go through the inbuilt secure platform uh, through the azure and for private endpoint configuration you again have to create the endpoint for what service you need the access from the backend okay let's go to the next which is security options so to enable azure defender on the sql you can use this service it's a paid service altogether a part of your database services so if you want you can opt for the free trial if you don't want you can disable it for now and let's move ahead and it's there is an additional setting option uh, you get the option to select use the existing database if you have any kind of backup option available uh, that is stored in your storage account or anywhere in the azure environment you can 
fetch that backup and create your database in case you don't have any backup you just want a simple database without any any kind of data you can select none if you want to do the testing kind of part you can use the sample databases that it provides uh, it provides the adventure workbook lt database that you will get few tables where you can do the query and analysis for the trial purpose so i'm using that sample database here let's go ahead and um, go for the tagging section in tagging section you can tag your resource as per your need and organizational need and then later it comes the review and create part where it will show the estimated cost per month of your database and then uh, it will show all the information that we have already provided and then you can hit on create and it will initialize the process of deployment i'll pause the video and come back to you once this deployment is completed so now the deployment is completed i i will expand the details of the deployment that what all resources has been deployed so first thing there is a server that has been created for our database backend purpose then it is tested that server is okay or not and then third thing that is created is the database that we want inside that particular uh, sql server that we have created let me go to the next option which is to go to my resource so when i go to my resource it will take me to the database here in the database it shows the options where uh, you can set the server firewall over there you can export the db you can restore it you can copy it and you can delete and connect it so this is all in the overview page of the database there comes the server name okay so uh, this is your server name and the link for the server now if you are using a windows you need to download one tool which is ssms sql server management studio to access your database this is the link you have to follow if you are not using the windows and you are stick to mac then uh, as this ssms is not compatible to mac os as of now so you have to use another tool which is again tool created by azure itself to access their databases or any other databases but this is a separate tool created by microsoft which is azure data studio now here is the link you can download the azure data studio from here uh, if you are using mac or linux or windows it doesn't matter so you can download it I, as i already have downloaded and installed it now when i open the azure data studio it shows me an option to create a new connection when i select that it shows that uh, connection type is microsoft sql server then a uh, second thing that i have to input is server name so the server name is if you remember i have told you that you have to copy that server name from the portal this is the server name that we have now uh, let us copy it from here and once i copy it i need to paste it in this box then i will have to select the authentication type how i want to authenticate to my server that is i will select sql login as of now which is my sql admin user id and sql admin password that i have given while creating the database server then i check box uh, i check on remember password and uh, then i get an option to select my database but now there is a problem it loads automatically the database that i have created if you have the connection to that server but currently i don't have any connection remember you selected none at the time of network uh, while creating the database you can update the firewall rules from this page where you add your public ip for your machine or your network to that server to access the database inside it if you want to go through the portal page uh, here is the way how you can go to there uh, go there <clears throat> so uh, it is here you have to go to the portal page again and then you have to click on the server then you have to go to the sql server that you have created now in the server page you will find a firewall option in the settings tab you get by default your client ip is already selected there and you can just add it at the start ip and end ip or you can uh, simply click on add client ip option so i will add it as my client ip and 
once I add it, it automatically takes that IP here and I have to save it. Once I do that, I don't have to do these additional processes in the Azure Data Studio. I'll just cancel this process. I will try to check the dropdowns in the database. Now it's loading. Here is my database that I have created. It is my SQL DB. Now, as this is done, um, I don't have to select the server group and I will click on connect. I will get a new page where I will see all my tables that are there in that database that I have created. So these all tables are actually adventure workbook database tables uh, that are by default created because I have selected the sample database over here. If you have selected none, it will not show you any table. This is how it works how you can connect to your database. As we come back to the portal page, you get another option that is at the server page, you can go to the database SQL database section and you can find what all database are connected to this server. If you are using this server for multiple databases, you will see the list of that databases here. And once you click on that database, you will get redirected to that database. Well, this was all about the SQL database in Azure portal. Hope you like this video. If you like, hit the like button. Please share to your friends and family and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.